Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, I recently published my Speedtest G video over on the Speedtest G uh, channel comparing the Snapdragon 888 in the Samsung uh, Galaxy S21 Ultra against the Exynos 2100 in the S21 Ultra. And there we saw that the overall CPU performance of the Exynos is actually slightly better than that of the Snapdragon, but the GPU in the Qualcomm is better than the GPU in the Exynos. And so overall, the Qualcomm chip came in as the fastest. However, that doesn't tell us about efficiency and sustained performance. That's peak performance when the phone is not being used, it's cool, and we just say, right, see how fast you can go. This video is about sustained performance and battery efficiency. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so I have a special version of Speedtest G that basically runs in a loop recording how long the Speedtest iteration takes and then the overall number of iterations that have occurred. And the idea is you charge up the phone to 100%, you then set this special looping version off, and then at the end of it, we have a set of results which tell us whether the speed test G slowed down because of throttling and how long it was able to run for before the battery ran out. So what you're gonna see is a graph that plots the overall time for speed test G for the Snapdragon version and for the Exynos version. And then we play that against the number of iterations and we can see whether any of them throttle because of heating, whether they slow down and how long, which one uh, lasts the longest. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at that graph. Okay, so this is what the graph looks like. We've got the time down the left-hand side. Uh, the shorter the time, the better, because it means the test runs faster. The red line will be the Galaxy S21 Ultra with the Snapdragon 888. The blue line is the one with the Exynos 2100. And along the top is the number of iterations. Okay, so we can see there we have the, first of all, the 888 is generally the overall faster machine. And now we're up to about nine iterations. Both of them are throttling slightly. Their performance is going down roughly at the same rate, both of them. So that's kind of parallel, really. Oh, a big drop now coming from the Exynos chip. That's throttled quite badly. Will it recover? Let's see whether that's a temporary thing. No, no, it's taken up a new level, much lower down while the Snapdragon 888 has maintained. Oh, and it's now going down. It's now, so it's throttled now much later than the Exynos, but it also has throttled and it's now reached a new level both of them now are going along at these new levels if you look at it it seems like the line is much smoother for the snapdragon 888 whereas it's much more up and down up and down so a bit more chaotic there for the exynos 2100 both of them now are going along so really we are up to see whether there's going to be any more surprise drops along the way or whether we're going to, which one's going to last longest in terms of battery life now of course both of these have got exactly the same cpu set up with the cortex x1 and the Cortex A78 and then the Cortex A55, but the Exynos was clocked slightly higher, which meant it was able to do better in the overall CPU. However, it did throttle much quicker. And of course, we've got the difference in the GPU. We've got the Adreno GPU in the Snapdragon 888, and we've got the Mali in the Exynos 2100. And still, you can see the line is much smoother overall for the Snapdragon 88, much more predictable performance after it has kind of gone down and throttled there. It has maintained that level there at around 90 uh, seconds there, whereas the Exynos 2100 is much more up and down, up and down, with big differences between each run. Relatively, of course, big differences. So really, we're going to see how far they can get now. A little bit of a recovery there by the Exynos 2100. It's going to be interesting to see which one is going to be able to last out the longest. This is about endurance. This is about how well the battery is going at the efficiency of the overall trips. Oh, another decline. Oh, massive decline there by the Exynos 2100. Bit of a recovery, bit of a recovery. But will it go back up again? That seems to be pretty bad. It's not doing very well over these later runs here. And then a spike at the end. That's it. It's died. That's it. No more there for the Exynos 2100. And now the 888. Surely it will come to the end of its run very, very soon. Again, maintaining a very steady level there all the way through this test and that's it it's also died as well now this is the number of iterations that were done but of course the iterations take longer on the Exynos 2100 so if you look at the overall runtime although it did less iterations it could do less work in terms of screen on time it was 222 minutes for the Exynos 2100 199 minutes for the Snapdragon 888 but it was able to do much more work in those 199 minutes than the Exynos was able to do in terms of raw performance. However, it would look like that the uh, the Exynos would actually last slightly longer. 
And how was it until you hit that first big throttling dip? Well, on the Exynos 2100, it was 27 minutes. We saw that big dip there that took it down to a whole new level. And for the Snapdragon 888, it was 38 minutes. So it was able to keep its performance better over a longer time at the beginning. And then once it dipped, certainly it was much more steady at that lower level, whereas the Exynos was much more erratic. So the, the Exynos throttled quicker. Uh, and the Snapdragon throttled later and was able to be more consistent. Okay, so there you have it. What do you think about the sustained performance and the battery life of those two different models? Please do tell me in the comments below. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. We're all at the mercy of the YouTube recommendation algorithm. So the best and safest thing to do is to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon. That way you won't miss any of my videos. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.